Hello, hello, property entrepreneurs. Uh, happy New Year, happy 2021. I uh, hope all things considered, you had a great break and time to see your friends, family, uh, in that small opportunity that we had. And no doubt lots of Zoom calls and uh, family quizzes and all the things that we did to keep ourselves entertained. Flying into 2021, what I wanna cover in this podcast and live for Facebook stream. So those of you that are joining us in the Property Entrepreneurs Facebook community. Uh, great to see you this morning. Those of you that are listening to us live, uh, those of you listening to us on the recording on the Property Entrepreneur, the official Property Entrepreneur podcast, make sure you subscribe, join the Facebook group and come in for as much of this content as uh, you are able. In this podcast, we're gonna look at the year of purpose-driven living. Now, there's two sections to this. The first is the year of. Now, this is really important and you'll get huge value in structuring your life, your business, your journey, uh, using this, this tool. And then second is the concept of purpose-driven living and how there doesn't necessarily have to be a work-life balance or a difference between going to work and playing. There is an opportunity to have a work-life blend or a purpose-driven living, which is quite a, which is a lesser used uh, term. So starting from the top, you're probably familiar by now that on Property Entrepreneur, our sole focus is, or our primary focus rather, is for you to create a life by design. For you to build a life by design, which means you live in the way that you choose, whatever that means. That might mean working one day a week, earning 30,000 pound a year, and having a great lifestyle with your uh, children and your family, and you have other things to, to keep you entertained. For others, it might be becoming the next empire builder, building multiple businesses, multiple teams, multiple streams, and going out there and becoming the next multi-millionaire or, or even billionaire. Whatever life, whatever your aspiration is, the most important thing is that it's designed by yourself. So if you don't live a life by design, if you're not consciously swimming against the stream and against the current to create a life by design, you will by default live a life by comparison, which means you will follow the life that your parents created for you, you will follow the life that everybody on your social media is, is pr pr projecting that they live, the celebrity life, society life, and you'll just fall into the, uh, the stream of the masses. So whatever your life by design is, whether that means loads of work or, or little work, loads of money, little work, little money, life by design is the most important thing. And within this, on Property Entrepreneur, we spend three months every year, October, November, December, crafting our, both our life by design and our business uh, strategy. One part of this, which I'm gonna share with you today, is what we call the year of. Now, let's hope that all of us live a good long life, good healthy life, and naturally through that, we're able to experience a number of versions of ourselves. So if you look back, you'll probably recognize that you were a certain person at a certain time, and then for whatever reason, whether it was a, an experience or maturity or a relationship, you step changed and became somebody else, and then maybe two, five, a decade uh, worth of years later, you became another person. Let's hope that all that plays out well and you get the opportunity to experience a range of things in your life. What we do on Property Entrepreneur is say, rather well, than that happen organically and waiting for life to do its thing and this journey to, to take us on the turns that it does, why not consciously every single year have the opportunity to rebuild, to, to experience a different year? And this is what we call the year of on uh, Property Entrepreneur. So the year of is every year we choose a year of. So for our businesses, we have a headline strategy and that is the destination in the sat nav. That's the single point of focus. That's the direction of travel for us in the year ahead. And for our personal lives, we choose something called the year of. Now, the year of, if you, you, if you don't currently do Property Entrepreneur and you haven't done Property Entrepreneur, then what I would encourage you to do is we're in January now is start to think, if your 2021 could be the year of anything, what would that, what would that be? And what the year of is a, the next chapter in your life. So when you look back and you say, oh, that was the year of X, Y, Z, you'll come up with things, you'll come up with titles at, that will anchor this year into something exclusive. And what I would encourage it to do is to think about in order for it to be effective, so there's things you want to achieve, and this isn't that. This isn't the year of making a hundred thousand pounds. 
This might be the year of independence. Let's say you wanted to make £100,000. Uh, you wanted to make £100,000 by... Uh, you wanted to make £100,000 so you could lose your job by the end of the year. Then it might... It's who do you need to become this year to achieve that thing. So, for example, let's say you've been sitting on the fence and you know that one of your shortcomings is you've got the potential, you've got the drive, but when it comes to actually pulling the pin and dropping the hammer, you don't actually execute. You know, you, you say, okay, maybe I'll do it next month or I'll, I'll leave this job next year. Or I'll, I'll take, I'll do that first deal later in the year. This one's not quite perfect. If you know that one of your, what, where you want to get to is you want to be very driven. You want to be very effective. You want to execute, but you're, the thing that's stopping you is actually executing. You might have a year of pulling the trigger. So what a year of pulling the trigger means is in your head, every single day, every week, every month, you will have the year of pulling the trigger. So you're looking at what you've got to do. And do you know, you're like, do you know what, Dan, just pull the trigger. Do you know what, Claire, just pull the trigger. Do you know what, Susie, just pull the trigger. Like what are these, what is it you want this year to actually ring in your ears to make you a better person? So the year of pulling the trigger would be one. Let's say, for example, you've made some money and you've done really well and you've got plenty of cash coming in and you've realised, you know what, you're really good at turning the tap on, but you're not so good at keeping water in the bucket. So you might think, right, do you know what I need to do this year? I need to stop focusing on the top line and focus on the bottom line. And you might say, right, this might be the year of tightening my belt. You know, I overspend on stuff. I don't take it. I don't negotiate on prices. I buy things that I don't need. I've got a bit too comfortable spending my money. I really need to get a handle on this and start to get wealthy rather than being rich or lucrative or even just burning everything you earn. So you might say, right, this year is the year of tightening the belt. And then everything you focus on is, right, I need to tighten the belt. I need to sharpen the axe. The year of, um, let's say that you, you've got the potential and the drive and the appetite to go to the next level, but you're, you're not quite stepping up. You're doing organic growth rather than... Um, organic growth rather than step changing. You're making minor sort of tweaks and revisions rather than really taking things up to the next level. And you might say, do you know what? This year I'm gonna have as the year of, so me personally, the year of level up. So for me, the year of level up means everything I do, I'm gonna level it up, right? The, my clothes, they're just not, I don't look the part, I don't look smart, I'm gonna level up. I'm gonna stop buying cheap suits from Primark, I'm gonna buy a nice suit from Next and I'm gonna get it tailored. That's me leveling up. Do you know what? I've put off buying a really nice car. I can afford one, but I haven't got one. This is my year to, to level up. I've been on a diet for forever, but I do a bit. I never seem to really get there. I'm not happy with my weight. Right, I'm gonna get a personal trainer. I'm gonna get a nutritionist. I'm gonna book a photo shoot, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna level up. What I want you to think about is, if you can choose one thing for this year to be, your chapter of your year, who you're gonna become, in 2021, the one thing that's gonna have the most significant difference to you in 2021, what is that gonna be? This might be something that you've always wanted to do or always wanted to achieve and never actually got around to it for a certain reason. So let's, let's uh, productize it, let's name it, and let's make that the year of. Or it might be that you're living life on one, one extreme, let's say you're completely frugal and shrewd and you don't spend any money, and you're like, do you know what? I've worked so hard, I'm saving all this money, what's the actual point? I'm actually gonna loosen the purse strings. And you might have the year of loving life as an example, or you might have, you might have uh, the year of loving life as an example. You might have the year of uh, loosening the purse strings. You might have the year of uh, giving over getting. All of these things will come together and we, and we form that, that year of. So a few, few examples. In 2018, in our business, we did bottom line time, focused on, uh, so we'd expanded the companies really aggressively. So then we turned it to focusing on, uh, then we turned it, it to focusing on uh, bottom line profit, so the company was uh, bottom line time, getting money to the bottom line in 2018. Got to 2019, I thought I've worked really hard, I've built these businesses, I've, I've really grafted to achieve what I've got. Now I'm actually gonna start loosening the purse strings, enjoying myself a bit more, stop taking myself so seriously. And in 2019, 
I did the year of love in life. Those of you that are on the live stream can see that. And what that was about, that was about seeing friends and family. It was about going away at the weekends. It was about having nice holidays and just enjoying things a little bit more. As an entrepreneur, uh, normally a bit excessive, taking things to the nth degree. By the end of 2019, I was uh, living in a penthouse apartment. I had, uh, I'd bought myself an R8 supercar. I'd bought myself a brand new uh, CLS Mercedes. My overheads were through the roof. And I was like, do you know what? I've gone from one extreme to the other. I'm, these things, I've never had fast cars or really spent a huge amount of money. I've always invested it, built the businesses, saved it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not happy on these overheads. My, my monthly overheads have gone up to about £8,000. And I was like, they're not making me happy. They're not making me content. And this was 2019. So 2020, I did the year of frugal hedonism. And the year of frugal hedonism is, so it's actually a book called Frugal Hedonism. And frugal means to live, frugal means to spend very sparsely or not waste things, use things, to, reuse things rather than replace things. And hedonism means enjoyment, satisfaction. So frugal hedonism is, is for example, enjoying and having, making fun and entertainment out of making yourself a, a set of curtains out of a piece of recycled material rather than going and spending two and a half thousand pounds on a weekend away in, in Dubai. Frugal hedonism is more about saving money and being frugal and enjoying the process. So in 2020, I did that and I actually went and lived on a narrowboat. So mine are usually very extreme. I have the opportunity for them to be extreme. I quite like to try, I like to let the pendulum swing and try both ends of the spectrum. Um, frugal hedonism is I bought a narrowboat, I got rid of my houses, I got rid of both my cars and I went from £8,000 a month overheads down to £750 a month overheads. And what that meant was experiencing the life of frugal hedonism. And through 2020, I actually found that I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed being frugal. I like the simpler things in life rather than the finer things. And that's been a really great experience. And then 2021, which is where we're going to come on to purpose-driven living, is in 2021, I decided my year of was going to be purpose-driven living. So 2021 for me, this year, is about purpose-driven living. And hopefully you've got a concept of year of now, and you can go away and think of what is your year of going to be. When you look back, I say, oh, do you know what? Year of 2020, I lived, on, I lived on a narrowboat. I lived off £750 a month. Uh, 2019 was my year of loving life. I went to Airbnbs every weekend. I saw most of the Peak District and the Lake District. I, I just enjoyed myself. I saw a lot of my, more of my friends, my family. Went and stayed with my, my parents quite a lot. I really enjoyed myself. This year is, is purpose-driven living. Have a think about what 2021 is going to be for you. And then next, this concept of purpose-driven living. So I start, when you're thinking about your year of and life by design, you want to be in flow. And what flow means is you do certain things and you can do them for hours. You can do them at the weekend. You would do them even if you didn't get paid for it. That is when you're in flow. That is when you're in, in line with your purpose. They're things you genuinely enjoy doing and you would do them even if you didn't get paid. I started becoming an entrepreneur for various reasons when I was a kid, but as I grew up and built a culture and a team and started to build businesses, I've always been an entrepreneur since I was probably about nine years old, probably actually since I was about six years old, I've always had entrepreneurial tendencies. And as I started to get traction, started to build these businesses, I started to feel very purposeful. So I was in my flow. I love creating. I love leading. I love building a team. I love taking on a challenge. I love going on a journey. All of the fun stuff of being an entrepreneur is my purpose. And when it's my vocation and vacation in one, if you like, when it's something I enjoy and it's work and life as a balance, as a blend rather than a balance, that's like purpose driven living for me. It's there is no difference between, just bear with me a second. There is no difference between uh, day and evening, between weekdays and weekends. 
work-life blend and purpose-driven living is where you actually feel purposeful in what you do and you're enjoying it while you're doing it and you would do it even if you didn't get paid for it. And that was the experience I had when I was a young entrepreneur, when I had all my friends, my family. We were, it was the whole social media experience, if you've seen the film Social Media. Uh, social, what's it called? Social, uh, I forget what it's called. But it's, it was that experience where we're all living in the house together, we're working together, we're, we're drinking together, we're having fun together. That was my purpose-driven living. And unfortunately, what happens with a lot of people, um, and we've seen it to the, to the worst extremes in the past, is they do something they really enjoy, they then get either carried away or they get jumped on the bullet train of success, and all of a sudden, this nice little purpose-driven purpose purpose -driven living that we enjoy is then converted into, right, now we need to scale, now we need to go big, now we need pro 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 uh, policies, processes, head offices, local offices, HR departments, £100,000 insurance policies. It's like, and you end up on this success chain. And what happened there was I actually lost my purpose-driven living and thought that being a, the definition of success as an entrepreneur was to build, well, in fact, that was my definition of success. At the time, my ego, my drive, I needed to build a big business. I needed to have multiple offices and multiple companies and multi-million pounds worth of revenue and deals and buying companies and scaling companies. That was my definition of success. And that may be your definition of success. That's part of the journey we, we go on. And then over the last few years, I've got to a point where I've realized my, my reward and my excitement from my work is becoming less. I'm running a business rather than building a business. I'm becoming more of a CEO and a managing director than, a, than an entrepreneur and a, an innovator and a creator and a leader. And just started to realize that it wasn't as enjoyable as it used to be. And then when I got to, to this year, I was like, right, when I'm thinking about my year of, what do I want? Do I want more scale? Probably not. Do I want more revenue and more profits and more money? Probably not. Do I want to go bigger and badder and smash it out of the park at my own expense and sacrifice a lot of my time and my life to do that? It's like, probably not. What do I actually want? And when you're thinking about your year of, sort of, think about what do you actually want? What do you actually enjoy? What do you do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis where you feel completely purposeful? You're in flow. You sit down to do it and you look up and you've been there three hours and you could keep going. When you find that thing, that, that was what I thought. It was like, when was the last time I had that? And it was when I was actually in the business, when I was in the business, recruiting a team, band of brothers, like driving the culture, high-fiving successes, like just really enjoying the journey. And then that was what I arrived at this year. I came back into the business in December for various reasons. And for the first time, rather than try and distance myself and work from the boat or work from overseas and try and be this lifestyle laptop millionaire, which really isn't, that whole concept is not me. I am an empire builder. I like being in the thick of it. I am a workhorse. <clears throat> Realised that is my purpose living driven, uh, driven, that is my purpose driven living, is being in the thick of it. So 2021 for me is about purpose driven living. And whether that becomes your year of, which you're more than welcome to use, or you just consider it and think, what is the most important thing for you this year, what, where do you wanna to get to? At a stage, I would recommend being, whatever it is, is your purpose, is your life by design, is your flow, that's where you wanna head with this. In 2021 and beyond is making the most of these opportunities, experiencing a different chapter to your book every year. Try both ends of the extremes, try spending loads of money and try saving loads of money. Try going out and smashing it out of the park and leveling up and also try taking your foot off the gas and being a lifestyle entrepreneur and chilling out. Whatever your year of is, make sure that it's something that's important to you and it's the next journey, the next chapter of your journey. The other thing, probably a closing sentiment then some top tips is there is no there. There is no elusive there. There is no solution. There's just shifts. And you've got the opportunity to have multiple chapters in your life. Why not do it every year? Experience something different every year. Sometimes you experience things and you realise you absolutely love it and you'll keep it. Like, year of frugal hedonism. I was going to live on a boat for a year and I'm still living on it now and I can't see myself moving off it anytime soon because I really liked it. Year of level up was how hard can I smash the living daylights out of myself and broke world records, bought companies, opened new head offices, did a body transformation, went down to single digit body fat, 
And I realized, you know what? Like that's the old me, that's the ego me, that's what's got me to where I am. But now I'm just more about my purpose, being in flow and purpose, uh, purpose-driven living. So have a different chapter every year, have a different year of it every year. And then probably a few top tips to get to yours. The first one would be, have a think about, well no, the first one would be look at your life now and write down three pages of notes. The first one is what you want more of. The second one is what you want less of. And the third one is what you want to keep. Jot down those three, those three lines and it will show you where you are now and where you should go. So what you want more of next year or this year, what you want less of and what you want to keep. The second thing would be um, have a think about when the last time you were in flow is. When was the last time you felt purposeful? When was the last time you were doing something and you absolutely loved it and you could have spent all day or all week doing it and you could have stayed up all night doing it? When was the last time you felt in flow and what did that look like? And that will build into your, your year of, hopefully. And then finally, what would you, in the, this year, if you could achieve anything and money was off the table, if you, what would you do if you, if you, what would you do? And this is more about purpose driven living. Some of you might not be at this stage and you might actually be about tearing down trees, smashing it out of the park. And actually money is the, the, the primary objective, which is fine. Absolutely fine. The final tip is about purpose driven living. If you want to find your purpose driven living where it's not work and play, it's not day and night, it's not weekdays and weekends. It is, this is my life. This is my purpose. Every day I'm enjoying what I do. I shared it earlier, my final closing sentiment on that, if you're looking for your purpose-driven living, would be, what would you do if you didn't get paid for it? Like, even if you didn't get paid for it, what, if you would still do this even if you didn't get paid for it. What would that be? Is it learning? Is it driving yourself? Is it helping others? Is it smashing out the park? Is it doing deals? Whatever that thing is that you would do even if you didn't get paid for it, that is purpose-driven living. Hopefully you got a lot of value from that. So closing, uh, to close off, grab yourself a pen and pen, have some cave time sessions, get yourself 60, 90 minutes to yourself and think of this year, if this year can be anything you want, well this year can be, in a world and life where you can do anything you want, why not do anything you want? And let's kick that off with the year of 2021. What is your year of gonna be? What are you gonna experience this year? When you look back in two years, three years, 10 years time, what was, 2021 the year of uh, for you hopefully that gives you some value uh, if you want some more information on it feel free to uh, check out the content that we put in the property entrepreneur facebook community uh, feel free to follow me on instagram property entrepreneur underscore the youtube channel has a lot of videos on this property entrepreneur youtube channel and then equally follow me on daniel hill my personal profile or daniel hill property entrepreneur uh, fan page all the information you need is on there. Lots of uh, tips and tricks to get you progressing with this. I wish you all the best as you progress with it. Best of luck with your year of. Uh, success and failure are both very, very predictable. If you're not living a life by design, you're living a life by comparison. So make the most of it. Have a great uh, day, week, month ahead. And let's go and enjoy 2021 for all it's worth. Take care, guys. I'll catch you on the next live video and podcast. Cheers.